When you buy any vehicle, it's important not to wear rose tinted specs. When I agreed to the swap of Project Lockdown with Bob, I am a bit guilty of that. I saw it, fell in love instantly, but there are some issues. I'm Lee, this is Coombe Valley Campers, and today we're gonna to be telling you everything that is wrong with Bob at T3 Docker. So before we even move off, um, have a quick look in the floor. There's water in the footwell. There's water in that one. And he's just cut out, perfect timing. Um, yeah, there's some issues with this car. Um, so yeah, I opened up the doors this morning, ready to go and drive this away, and there is water in the footwell. So we've definitely got a leak either in the windscreen seal or in the front section. Um, and if we can get him started again, come on. Yeah, okay, um, it needs a very, very good tune. That's another thing. And the other is that we're losing pressure in the clutch, whether that's uh, lack of brake fluid or um, a faulty master cylinder or a faulty clutch slave cylinder, I don't know. However, we've got to pump it up before we even get it into gear. So already there's mechanical things we've got to look for. Still very nice to drive. So yeah, having a faulty clutch means there is, uh, or a clutch hydraulic system, means that there is, well it's difficult to change gear for a start. Um, and also, if you hear any clunking, it's because one of the drop links has actually snapped clean in two. It's the uh, drop link for the anti-roll bar and it's just completely snapped in two. Luckily I've got some spares already um, and I'll show you them in the back. But for now, enjoy the drive. We're going to find a nice quiet spot to go and do this. change plan we were going to come down to this really nice secluded spot but after the four days of rain we've had down here uh, we didn't want to get stuck in the mud it's pretty bad down there and they're actually using a, a JCB to pull out a truck that's been down there for an event um, so let's try and find somewhere else <laughs> that'd be us then <laughs> hang on Try and find a bit of traction. Happy know then. Did it lose the match straight away? Not even getting up there, is it? This isn't scripted. <laughs> um, if not, we'll go and call on Dan. Can we just film the video here? <laughs> Let's try and get it out first. Oh, they're not going to work very well, are they? We're gonna need help. <laughs> We're gonna need help. This is embarrassing. I'm now gonna have a T4 pull out a T3 out of the mud. But purely because I'm an idiot. 
So Dan is now coming to save the day. I'm an idiot! Luckily he's got some uh, better tyres than I have. Right, I've just got to find somewhere on my truck to tow from. <laughs> Boot them over with the kayaks on. <laughs> tried all sorts of stuff <laughs> and then I just ended up digging myself in even more <laughs> now trying to find somewhere the only place I can find to hang this off at the moment is a very weak engine mount all my clean engine bay I've just completely ruined <laughs> now I'm gonna be muddy for the rest of the video Don't go anywhere without your friends. <laughs> Hello mate, thank you very much. Should we film the video now? Location number three. Let's see if we can get our video shot this time, shall we? <laughs> what a plonker. Starting from the outside then, glaring the obvious, the paint. A lot of people have told me that I should keep the patina, um, just fix the rust, keep all the you know, age-related marks and things like that. Um, however, we've got holes in the windscreen. Um, this morning when I opened the vehicle up, there was water in the footwells, so there's definitely a leak. That's one of the first things. Along the bottom lip here, it's a very prone place for these vehicles to uh, go rusty and have rot, because effectively, when VW made them, they made basically a trench for all of the water and the dirt to sit in. They don't get washed very often. And then they start to rot uh, from the bottom or even from the inside out, water gets in there. Um, Badge is missing on the front grill. Not a huge deal, but the grill needs sorting out as well. We've got parts missing. The wipers, they work, but I don't think they're particularly brilliant. The windscreen has a huge chip in it and a smaller one just here. It looks like they've been repaired or tried to be repaired but this may even be, yeah, it, it could well be the original original windscreen in this thing because it's still got the VW logo on it. Um, so it could well be the 36-year-old uh, windscreen. The bumper, it looks good, but we're missing end caps. Excuse the alarm. Uh, missing end caps and just not in the best of shape, really. So I think we're going to need to paint that. Uh, these seams, now again, T25s, T3s, they're prone to rusting in the seams. The only real way to solve that completely is to cut out the offending panel, treat the rust in between the two panels, and then replace it with new. I don't know if we're gonna go that far with this wagon, but we may well do. So watch this space. Moving round to the passenger side. Uh, starting from the top then, our, uh, our gutters. They certainly need some love, care and attention. Again, not a problem. We're looking to paint the vehicle. Um, so we'll grind that back, treat it, and then fill it and paint it. Make that look all lovely. The window rubbers. They are literally falling apart in my hand here. Um, I'm sure if we got up to a decent speed, they'll start whistling as well. Um, but in terms of this vehicle, I think I would like to put some opening quarters because this is going to be, like I said before, a daily vehicle for me. Mirror's not so bad, but I might change those for some VW T3 truck mirrors. Um, again, moving down the paintwork. This door, again, not particularly brilliant. It's obviously had some rust in the past that's just been touched up with what looks like house paint. Um, a dent in the bottom of the door. The arches, surprisingly, are very good. And we're just keeping to the bodywork. We'll move to the inside in a bit. They are getting a bit crusty down there. They're not rusted all the way through. But again, another place they are prone to rusting out. But that panel and that area in particular, pretty good. Moving on to the more unique parts of the uh, docker, the double cab. Um, the door is actually in really, really good shape. There's a couple of little dings and dents around it, but there's no rot on the bottom. Actually a really, really good shape door. These locker doors, again, a unique part to the docker slight dents in them not a big deal and we're missing the locks 
fortunately I have um, sourced some locks already through a good friend of mine and we'll get those repaired and we'll show you how to on an up and coming video. Um, but that door I have opened, I think I've opened this one, but it was a bit seized. Moving down into this corner, we've got some, not terminal, but some. we've got some rot that's gone all the way through. Um, not a great deal to worry about because we can rebuild that. Um, I've got some very clever friends who are excellent with metalwork and fabrication. We can get that all refabbed up, not a problem. But generally, the structure is very rust free. It's got surface rust all over where I think it's been sitting a while. But generally, in terms of the structure and uh, the trailing arms and the mounting points and the jacking points, really, really good, strong vehicle. Moving on to the tailgates then, all of the original pins have just been replaced with these M12 bolts. Not a problem, you can get reproduction ones um, or we may even have engineered um, some special ones just so we can remove them easily. But not too much of a problem. They're all there. We're missing some of the rubber bungs that kind of look like this. And they protect the bodywork when you bring uh, the sides down. Moving on to the back. Tailgate hinge, that's a bit knackered. Look how much that moves around. Um, the lights are cracked, faded and damaged. We can replace those. Um, and this rear valance, not too much of a problem because they're normally disguised by a bumper. Um, but what we're gonna do is probably put a tow bar in that. Um, so we'll be hiding a lot of that. I won't be going too mad with the bodywork down there. Um, but yeah, missing bumpers, missing bumper irons and other parts. Um, the badges I've sourced already. Um, they come again through my uh, contact who deals with T3 parts and early air cooled parts as well. So that's really, really cool. And yeah, very happy. Um, with what we've got and what we're able to get as well. Moving on into the bed of the truck. My favorite feature really, I love the fact that I can just chuck anything in the back here and you know, take it anywhere. I've got um, space for mountain bikes, space for camping gear, space for an eight before sheet apply. You know, just have it just tipped up on the top. Just awesome, awesome truck. The bed on this, not in a good state. After looking around underneath, this is actually a replacement floor. And I can tell that because when looking underneath, you can see like the black uh, shipping primer that you get on replacement panels. So this floor has been replaced once already and it has since rusted. But what's interesting is that this tailgate, sorry, the engine hatch is not an original feature. Most double cabs or VW T3 pickups have just a square hatch in the boot. Uh, or in the load bed and it's bolted down with four bolts. I'm guessing so you can protect the engine bay. If you were to fill the bed full of sand or cement, it's not all gonna drip down into the into the engine bay. Um, so this is quite a unique feature actually, which uh, you know, I'm super happy about because I've got easy access to the engine and I don't intend on you know filling this bed full of aggregate or anything like that. It's just gonna be um, a usable truck. So uh, probably another replacement floor in the pipeline, but keeping the awesome engine hatch. Um, tailgates are good, I reckon they just need blasting and painting, but for the time being it's a work truck. So I'm not going to get too precious about it. In reality, I think I'm just going to get this working, running properly. Oh, I'm going to show you the engine. But yes, um, my aim is to just get this working and running properly. And they're just using it. So the engine bay, you've seen us clean and tidy this. I might have wrecked that a little bit now because we've just got stuff on the mud. Um, but there's some issues going on in here. Um, whoever replaced the engine back in the day didn't do an amazing job. I believe that the engine case is new or reconditioned, but all of the original parts from the original engine have been bolted onto that new case. Um, it's a later case, um, therefore the earlier vehicle wiring doesn't match up perfectly to the later um, sensors and uh, all sorts of things. So you've got water, uh, water temperature sensors and oil pressure sensors that aren't calibrated or aren't tying in with the existing wiring. So I've made a couple of 
shortcuts to make sure we've got charging lights and oil pressure lights and things like that. And what I've also done is bought a new wiring loom, an engine bay wiring loom to counteract that. But again, we're all gonna be going through with you all of the stuff that we need to do. Um, the fact that it hasn't got an actual expansion tank is a bit worrying. So, you know, the water cooling system isn't working properly. We will be going through that with you as well. So look forward to that because um, I actually quite enjoy that job, flushing the system, putting new coolant in, getting it bled, uh, making a good working system. Because despite what everybody says, are oh, these vehicles always overheat, they're always catching fire. Yeah, if you don't look after them, maybe. Um, so we'll show you how to bleed the system, get the cooling system working properly, and we're gonna be replacing the fuel lines as well because these have got some real pokey fuel lines on it. Um, some of them haven't even got fuel clamps on, you know, pipe clamps on them or anything like that. So look forward to going through that. God, there's loads to do with this one. I've got so many videos to do with you. I don't know if we're gonna have Ali for all of them because there's so much work to do in it. I might have to film some. So, load bay and engine bay, tick. Uh, moving on to the other side, again, we've got some locks for these. Um, the engines, uh, the seal in fairly good nick, but the doors we don't need to replace, they're fairly good. But yes, we just need to get the lock on them. Again, structure, um, very good, we jet washed all the inside of the wheel arches. Again, if you're a patron, you can see that video where we wash the whole truck. That's a pretty good one as well. Um, we're gonna be removing this panel, sacrilege, I know. But if I'm carrying my family in here, I'm gonna to wanna to put a window in there. So I've already got the glass again from my parts guy. Uh, we're gonna take that window out, put the glass in. Again, we'll go through that with you. Um, bit of surface rust, not too much of a worry for me. Um, again, because we're more than likely gonna be painting it. Into the cab, what's wrong with it? Um, doesn't change gear properly, none of the gauges really work, um, the clutch, master cylinder or slave cylinder's leaking I think, um, battery's not brilliant, we want to put some seat belts in it, it's got rust in the floor, and um, no stereo, so much stuff. And all these window rubbers again, look, it hasn't even got a window rubber there. So the glass just kind of rattles around in it. But it's all stuff we can do together. If you want to know any of these bits and pieces, or if you want to know how to do any of these bits and pieces, or if there's any jobs you want me to do and film, just let me know. Because it's one of the reasons we got this car, because it's mine, it's not a customer's. Um, there's loads of things I can do to it and film it at the same time. And uh, I can take you through it as well. Maybe even use this as a buyer's guide. Um, don't go in with rose tinted glasses look at the structure look at the mechanics I probably shouldn't have swapped this but the T4 wasn't for me T3s are I've always wanted a double cab and this one fits the bill and my budget absolutely perfectly so for this video thank you very much don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel again if you want to be a supporter of the channel um, and even give me some suggestions because our patron supporters give us the suggestions um, for these videos and things as well so um, click on uh, all the links down below we'll leave everything down below including um, our Facebook our Instagram everything like that all the links will be down below and uh, yeah I look forward to starting this journey with you guys I just can't wait to get working on it. But I thought before we do anything, let's show you the bad bits. Let's show you what we're gonna do. And uh, yeah, I want to know what you want us to see done to this vehicle as well. But for this one, thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you soon.